The Aroma Miser line. Back in 2014, the very end of 2014, a company called Steamcrave popped up with a tank that they coined as the rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. RDTAs, from vapor's perspectives nowadays, when people think of RDTAs, they think of the top coiler RDTAs that have got the tank at the bottom. So you're basically looking at a dripper at the top with a tank stuck to the, the with a tank stuck to the bottom end. It was actually Steam Crave that came up with the concept first. With this, well, not actual this tank, but this line of tanks, the Aroma Miser series. And what Steam Crave did, they took a normal tank design. Tank coil at the bottom with the tank above it that we all recognize from tanks that we see these days. Coil at the bottom, tank at the top. But instead of bottom airflow, which is what all RTs were designed back in 2014 as, they went with side airflow. They made a double chambered wall. So they had the chamber that held the coil, but an outer chamber with a hole punched straight through it. So instead of the air coming in from the bottom, it came in from the side, like an RDA, Rebuildable Dripping Tank Atomizer. It was the Aromamizer 1, released at the back end of 2014, beginning of 2015, that actually kicked the whole craze off. And now everyone is making an RDTA. What RDTAs have done since then, though, is they went down the road of the iJoy Limitless style. Coil at the top, tank at the bottom. Basically what they've done, they've taken a dripper and they've stuck a tank to the bottom end of the dripper. This, however, is what an RDTA actually is. A standard bottom coil tank with side airflow. It's Steam Crave that pioneered it. What we are looking at here today is what a lot of people, including myself to be honest, is calling the Ragnar Mini, but it's actually the Steam Crave Aroma Miser version 3, or sorry, Steam Crave Aroma Miser Supreme version 3. How supreme is it? Well, there's only one way to find out, but before we do, let's have an up close and personal of this tank review. So, starting with this, this is now becoming a regular thing for the Steam Crave tanks. This is, of course, the mesh deck kit, specifically for the Supreme V3, because the size of the tank is different than the other tanks that were released when the first version of these mesh decks came out. So this does actually come in the box, by the way. It's not an accessory, so you will get this in the box. We'll have a quick look at this. And as you can see, there is really no much difference with the packaging um, and what you get. You do, of course, get the little pole that you, wrap, that you wrap your mesh strip around. You'll get some spare bits and bobs. And, of course, you will get your little mesh strips here. Quick look at the mesh deck itself. Oops. Quick look at the mesh deck itself. Let's zoom this all the way in. There we go. And what you have here is the Steam Crave mesh deck, but just rejigged slightly for the size of the base on the Supreme V3. Now, I was gonna coil on this, but I'll be honest, folks, I've never been a fan of mesh. Um, just any kind of mesh, to be perfectly blunt with you. Although the Watofo Profile RDA series is a pretty damn good series of, a pretty damn good series of rebuildable uh, drippers and then you know you've got the whole mesh decks for RTAs like this one here um do you know call me old-fashioned I still prefer coils I do I honestly still prefer coils but you do get your mesh deck kit you also get in the tank this is not the standard deck in the tank in that in the actual tank you've got the single coil option deck air comes through there goes through there and then you've got a little bit of airflow coming in from the bottom. So you've got a channel going all the way in, see it? All the way into the bottom. So not only are you getting side airflow from this side of the airflow system, you're also getting bottom airflow into the bottom of your coil. And because the coil's pushed to one side, it will mean that whatever side it's on, let's see, in fact, you know what, I'll show you. It'd be easier if I just showed you. We'll pop out the old deck. We'll, whoops, we'll pop in the... We'll pop in this deck here. So whatever way round you've got this deck, right? And the way this is rigged right now for the single coil, 
this side here is going up against this side airflow here. But as you can see, the coil is pushed a lot more closer to this side airflow as well. So what you're basically getting with the single deck, or well, the single coil deck option is the coil pushed to one side. So you're gonna get the coil slammed with air from this side, and you're also gonna get air from this side, but you're also gonna get air going in through the base and up through the bottom. So what you're basically looking at with the single coil deck is a, th well not 360, a 180 airflow design, but with a lot more air, pressure at least, coming in from this side of the actual airflow system. But we're not gonna be using this. We're gonna be using this, which is the age old standard postless deck. And it's always this deck that I judge all Steam Crave tanks on because this is the standard deck for the Steam Crave series. So we're gonna pop this back in here and we're gonna have a quick look around the tank. Starting at the top, mouthpiece. Pop this off, you're looking at an 810 mouthpiece as you can see with the O-ring actually inside the cap. Twist and pull off, they're going for a bayonet cap fitting with this one with a massive silicone seal round there to keep the juice in. Fill hole there, fill hole there. Pop this back on. You have got the locking system here. Line it up with the dot. That's your juice flow control fully open. And if we keep your eye on that hole there, if we twist this round, what you will start to see is, see it? Lock. Juice flow control is now closed. Airflow control is down here. We've seen this airflow control design on a couple of tanks, actually, that's come out before. There's nothing fancy going on with the airflow design. What they've basically done with the Supreme, because if you get the Supreme V2 and compare it to this tank, there is a couple of differences to do with the airflow, and more especially with the decks for the Supreme V2. The V2 was a rather older tank in the lineup of Steam Crave, uh, Steam Crave Aroma Miser series tanks. And all they've basically done, they've taken the airflow control for the Ragnar, the airflow control and deck options for the Ragnar and the Titan and shoved it into the Supreme. So that basically means the entire lineup of tanks from Steam Crave, including the Aroma Miser line, which is what this is part of, is now up to date. That's what they've essentially done. So what we're going to do now, pop the deck off, and we're going to pop a couple of coils in here now. Some of you are probably going to be thinking, Vic, try the single coil, try the single coil. The Aroma Misers were never, as well, the, the Supreme at least, was never designed to be a single coil tank. I um, better not switch that on. I better not even build in that because I'll probably end up firing the damn thing when I'm putting the coils in. Hold on. Let's use... What am I going to use? I will use the little hand wood crafts design wooden weighted build base. But yeah, the Aroma Miser line um, was not even from the old Aroma Misers going back to 2015. They were never really designed to be single coil tanks. They were designed to be dual coil tanks. And when it comes to the Aroma Miser line, I always judge the tanks on this deck, the postless deck that hasn't really changed much since the tanks have came out. What coils am I going to use? Um, I will use. These might be a little bit big. Well, actually, they're not. Couple of fused Claptons. Okay, for all the people with the coily tool, I'm going to be doing the usual four millimeter cut on the legs here. That's all you're going to need for the aroma miser. That's all you're going to need for the aroma misers. Bring out the snips and. Okay, that was dangerously close to hitting the lens. I need to be very careful when I'm snipping these legs. <laughs> I am actually surprised and, and like, how long is it now since I've been using these Canon cameras and something like um, three years of using these cameras, I've never actually hit the lens once. I'm gonna do it that way around. That pinged and almost hit the opposite side of the room. Yeah, anyway, pop you two there. And we're going to need, which one? By the way, for the people wondering what I'm using, these are called Weha P3 
Pico finish. Made in Germany, just look them up on Amazon, whether you're in the US, the EU or the UK. They're called the Weeha Pico finish. This was actually a gift sent to me a long time ago. I'm still using them. Cracking set of kit, this. Right, unscrew that. There we go. <sighs> okay, wick hole, wick hole. These are very easy to wick up, these decks, folks. Very easy to wick up. So, get my cotton gods cotton out. And these are 2.5 millimeter coils, so I'm not gonna need too much cotton here. We will tear off. That much. Then we'll split that in two. Make sure those coils are cooled off and then we'll pop the cotton through. That goes in like that. Squeak it. Same with the other side. Push that through. Back and forth, and you want enough cotton, obviously, to reach about halfway down there. You want enough cotton to fill up the entire hole so you don't flood out, but you don't want to shove the cotton all the way down and block up the hole down there. So you want enough cotton to reach halfway down there and actually hit the base. And where's my scissors went? And I'm going to be cutting this to round about there. That'll do it. Basically, the bow tie method. That should be more than enough cotton. Go in with the tweezers, give it a very quick rake, just to get rid of all the loose stuff. Clean up the ends. And then we get our tweezers and we just slowly push the cotton in towards the deck. Letting the cotton find its own way in. Same with the opposite side. Push the cotton in towards the deck and let the ends of the cotton find their own way in to the juice intake, and that way you're not going down the way, you're pushing in the way. Because if you do that and push the cotton down, you end up, you'll end up compressing the cotton, and this is why a lot of people end up getting dry hits from tanks. Or you can try the dam method, that'll work just fine on this tank as well, but I'm using this method instead just to make sure that all the holes are filled out. Any spare cotton you're seeing there, go back in with the scissors and cut off the excess. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Clean up the ends. Okay, let's juice this up. Uh, where are we here? So, this is unflavoured vegetable glycerin with 
uh, with, uh, this is unflavored vegetable glycerin with three milligram nicotine. So what you're basically looking at here, folks, is 99 point something or other. In fact, how did this work out? You're looking at something like 98, 99% vegetable glycerin, no flavoring in this. Because I kept saying practically Max VG when it wasn't actually Max because a lot of it was taken up with the flavoring and a lot of it was taken up with the nicotine. So this is unflavored VG, nicked up to three milligram. Look how thick that is. And I've been using this to test out tanks, test out pods, test out AIOs to see how good the wicking is. So we're going to just drop a little bit here. And the good thing is, because it's unflavoured VG, once I've finished the testing out, I can pop something like the peach custard in, or pop something like the uh, pop something like black vine in, and the flavour comes straight through because there's no flavouring in this. If you've never vaped straight vegetable glycerin, it is tasteless but with a very, very subtle sweet taste. If you do the finger test of vegetable glycerin, like that, it tastes sweet, but there's no other flavor. It's just, it's something like a, it's almost like a syrup, like a Lyle's golden syrup flavor. Sweet, but with no inherent taste. Here we go. A bit more. That is looking good to me, right. Let's get, where are we? Where did I put the tank? There it is. Let's get the tank. And we will line this up like that. There we go. Face on. Drip tip on. The Aromizer Supreme Version 3, coiled up, wicked up, and ready to go. And we're back up top with what is essentially the Ragnar Mini. More about that later on, but yeah, the uh, Steam Crave Aromizer Version 3 got it sitting on top of the Gen X from Vapor S. Oh, and that is way too low. Hold on. Oh, that's right, it was on that fucking Vandy Vape dripper earlier on. That's why it's down this low. Uh, coils are coming out at 0.12. So we're going to bump this up to 90, get a little bit of heat in there because I, I will have the airflow control wide open. So I'm going to add this up at 90. There we go. And we're off. That is a lot of vapour for a tank this small. Oh. And I'm actually using the Max VG. This is 90, uh, practically speaking, it's 99% VG. There's no flavorings in this, and there's only three milligram nicotine in here. And the rest is basically vegetable glycerin. So it's not just a case of it practically being a Max VG. It is a Max VG that's in this. Nothing wrong with that. Bubbles, it's wicking away just fine. So the Steam Crave Aroma Miser version, uh, Aroma Miser Supreme version three. Get the name right, Vic. There's so many Aroma Misers out there now you get mixed up. So what do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. This is basically a Ragnar Mini. It's essentially what it is, folks. It's basically a Ragnar Mini. The supreme line, the supreme line of the Aroma Miser series of tanks have generally had a different design outlook than the other non Aroma Miser tanks that came out from Steam Crave. Steam Crave have always had two separate lines of tanks the Aroma Miser series, which is the one we're looking at here, but the Aroma Miser series along with the Aroma Miser Supreme, and then the separate tanks like the Titan, like the Ragnar, that did not come under the Aroma Miser heading. What Steam Crave have essentially done with the Aroma Miser Supreme version three is they've merged the Aroma Miser line, which always was a separate line of tanks, into the technical updates that the Ragnar got, but the Aroma Miser line didn't. 
And this has been a problem that Steam Crave have had for a couple of years now with the Aromamizer line, not just not just the original Aroma Aromamizer line, but the Aromamizer Light and the Aromamizer Supreme line, all under the Aromamizer heading. People were looking at the Ragnar thinking, this is a technically better tank with a technically better deck option, technically better juice flow control, technically better airflow control with technically more options, which meant it was a technically better tank. And I think Steam Crave went, you know what? Fuck it. Let's get the Aromamizer line, get the Supreme, which is the top end of the Aromamizer tank line, and basically get all, get all the added benefits of the Titan and the Ragnar, pick out all the good bits, and shove it into the Supreme line. And that's exactly what they've done here. Technically, though, if you look at it from an airflow control perspective, from a juice flow control perspective, from the inner cap perspective, and not so much in the deck, no, no, I'll remove the deck thing. So you're looking at it from airflow control ring, airflow control system, inner chamber, uh, and juice flow control system. You're looking at the Ragnar Mini. The only difference is you get a couple of other deck choices with this tank that you will not get with the Ragnar because the Ragnar's too fucking big to have a single coil option, which is the same kind of that, that kind of one wall option that you've seen me show, which is, I just, I went for the dual coil in this, but you will get some deck options on this that you will not get with the Ragnar. But if you have the Ragnar and you think, for daily use, if you're out and about walking the dog, for instance, for daily use out and about, the Ragnar might be too big for you. I'd go for this, because it is basically a Ragnar Mini. That's essentially what we're looking at here. And I think what we're looking at here with this tank is a merge of the Aromamizer line into the more technically heavy aspects of the non-aromamizer line tanks, like the Ragnar, like the Titan, that kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with this tank, folks. There really isn't. I mean, I was, I was, kind, I was trying to be nitpicky, but even if I'm being nitpicky, I can't think of anything wrong with this. I honestly can't. In the box, you get the mesh deck. In the box, you get the single coil option. In the box, you get the age-old standard postless dual coil deck design that we all recognise. So all the options are in the box from retail. So I can't think of anything wrong with this. Honestly, can't. And when it comes to flavour, the first three or four days of this coming in, I wasn't running it with the Max VG to check out the Wiccan. I was running it with the Peach Custom, and then I was running it with uh, Watch for Projects Black Vine. Then it was the last dregs of the rice pudding vape from, uh, from Exceptional Vapes. And then I ran through a diluted down, albeit a diluted down naturally extracted tobacco from Les Picken because it's all mouth to lung naturally extracted as I've got. Very strong in the flavour. You don't want to use it for direct lunging because it's a very strong flavour. So I cut it with 50% VG just, you know, just to tone down the flavour a bit. And I had zero issues with the flavour, folks. Zero issues with the flavour. And again, I'm judging the tank from the standpoint of the standard, everyday, postless, dual coil deck. When it comes to these Aroma Miser tanks, it's always the postless deck that I use on them to find out if the flavour has progressed on from previous tanks that are using the same, uh, that are using the same kind of airflow and the same kind of deck. I did try it with the single coil deck option, however, for about a day and a half, and I've got to say, I was impressed with the flavor that this thing was producing with one single coil inside the deck head. So you can actually use this as a single coil tank and still get phenomenal flavor from it. But to be honest, it works better dual coil and they always have worked better dual coil. Anyway. That's a damn good vape. That was the Steam Crave Aroma Miser Supreme Version 3. Again, if you've got the Ragnar and you're looking for a Ragnar Mini, go and buy it. But this tank has got serious ramifications 
for the future, if there is going to be a future, for the supreme line. Because the supreme line and the Aroma Miser series, the, the standard Aroma Miser series, has always lagged behind the non Aroma Miser release tanks. Like the headline Aroma Miser release tanks. Like you look at the Ragnar, the Ragnar was not pushed as an Aroma Miser line tank, it was pushed as the Steam Crave Ragnar. It wasn't pushed as the Steam Crave Aroma Miser Ragnar. Separate tank line, just like the Titan. But this tank presents Steam Crave with a problem for the future because they can because they've released this, they can't take a step backwards in the design approach of the Aroma Miser line now. So they've got to push the Aroma Miser series of tanks forwards in technical aspects along with the non Aroma Miser line. Have they backed themselves into a corner with this tank? We'll find out in 2021. Put it that way, that's when we'll find out in 2021. Anyway, <sighs> big thanks to Steam Creep for sending the tank over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do down below. Thought it was good, give it a thumbs up. Very fast at the top, you've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching on the channel. And in that's latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the hashtag Army, the Patreon subscribe stars and YouTube members for supporting Vic McVic financially. That's what's keeping this studio going. And underneath me is the Vic logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.